Howdy Star fans, it's another beautiful day here in Starbase, it's 45 degrees and it's almost the end of January, which means we are closing in on the promised launch month for Flight 3, and that is, of course, February. SpaceX is busy preparing the old launch site here for the return of Booster 10 and Ship 28. Plus, we've seen a load of upgrades, modifications, and you guessed it, testing. SpaceX is also working on future vehicles to test them ahead of their own flights and they're building out vehicles even further down the line as they get further and further into their production flow. It's a lot to talk about, so let's discuss everything that's happened in the last week. I'm Jack Beyer for NSF, and this is your Starbase Update, sponsored by Brilliant. You may remember from our previous Starbase update that Booster 12 was undergoing cryogenic proof testing over at the Massey Outpost. Well, after two of these tests, it was done and was moved back to Starbase proper. For some reason we don't yet know, Booster 12 went back to the rocket garden rather than the production site and say, inside of a mega bay to be put on a workstation. Now, these workstations are where SpaceX installs some of the final parts ahead of flight, including engines and engine shielding. It could be that SpaceX is waiting on data from future flights before doing any more work on Booster 12. Or it could be that they're just trying to keep space free inside of the mega bay for stacking of Booster 13, which we'll get to in a minute. Or it could be something completely different. Honestly, we don't really know. Right near Booster 12 in the Rocket Garden is Ship 26, which was on the engine installation platform, which Maybe now we should just call the elevated work platform, given that no engine work appears to be ongoing on the vehicle. Of course, Ship 26 is still there, and it's still not obvious what's going on with this cursed vehicle, other than the installation of all the stringers that we've talked about in previous Starbase updates. We'll keep our eye on it, but for now, Ship 26 remains a mystery. Speaking of things that aren't obvious, check out what's happening here. Wait, zoom in on the lift. See how it kind of looks like it's hanging out in midair, not doing anything? Well, this side of the high bay is actually where Ship 28 is located. Now, we're not sure what exactly it might be doing, but the height of that lift is very close to the height of the nose cone lift points. You can see that by comparing it with ships 30 and 31, which are visible, unlike Ship 28, which is, again, tucked away. And if this is the case, it could be that SpaceX is tiling those spots over in preparation for rolling the vehicle out to the launch site and stacking it atop Booster 10 ahead of launch. Continuing now with the work that's happening at the production site, Booster 13's methane tank is now being stacked. If you remember from previous Starbase updates, Booster 13's LOX tank is already stacked, and so now the other half of the vehicle is coming together. That means we'll have Booster 10, 11, and 12 fully built, and 13 is now well past the halfway point on its build. If SpaceX doesn't decide to skip any of these boosters, then that would mean this booster is for the sixth flight of Starship. Every time we see one of these being built, there's always the question in the back of our minds about when these vehicles will fly. With testing and flight cadence set to ramp up in 2024, it wouldn't really be surprising if we see all of these vehicles fly before the end of the year. Another thing we saw at the production site this week was the end of the cleanup and removal of venerable old Tent 3, aka the Nose Cone Tent. Last week we bid farewell to the last of the original production tents here at Starbase, and now, all of the pieces seem to have been cleaned up from this area. We don't know what SpaceX is gonna put here yet. Maybe an expansion of the Star Factory, maybe more parking for employees, maybe some other building. Again, we don't know. We'll just have to wait and see, but my money is on a further expansion of the Star Factory. I mean, it just makes sense. Now, one thing we did find out in the last couple weeks is the fate of the LR-11000 crane that was used to build the Mega Bay 2. The crane had been lowered into a horizontal position, and we didn't really know what SpaceX was going to do with it. But shortly after that, teams started taking it apart. This week, we still saw some of the pieces of this crane being loaded and removed from the production site. The jury's out on whether or not we'll see this crane return, but either way, thanks to it, now we have a second mega bay up and running. Another crane that was worked on this week was the LR-11000 crane located at the launch site. This little fella had laid down for a siesta last week and was worked on basically immediately, and they're still working on it right now. 
We're not sure what's going on here, once again, but we'll find out soon enough. It's 2024, new year, new me. This year I'm gonna exercise more, eat healthier, and actually do a bit more laundry. What? Potatoes are healthy. And this totally isn't the same shirt or anything. <laughs> so what was the probability of me sticking to my resolutions? Well, besides now knowing it's zero, you can find out using a course on today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an interactive way to learn about different math, science, and computer topics. That includes one of their newer courses on the introduction to probability. Right away, you're learning about calculating probabilities for soccer matches. Yes, I know I'll catch more flack for saying soccer than dissing the Aries One fan club. You can get a 30-day free trial by going to brilliant.org slash NASA Spaceflight or by clicking the link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Continuing to try new courses on Brilliant? Now that's a resolution I can keep. Now that we're here at the launch site and talking about all of the changes that have happened, let's talk about preparation SpaceX is doing to get ready for the return of Ship 28 and Booster 10 ahead of Flight 3. One of the things we saw this week was crews working on the ship quick disconnect umbilical that provides all of the fluids and power to the ship while it's on top of a booster. This umbilical got seriously bent out of shape during the last launch, and therefore it needed quite a bit of work to get back to spec, with Ship 28 set to come to the launch site soon, and thus the imminent return of a stacked vehicle, this piece of hardware needs to be in the best shape possible so that it connects and disconnects properly from the vehicle. We saw, in fact, a retraction test of this umbilical soon after crews finished working on it, so I'll take that as a good sign. Along with the quick disconnect work, we also saw a lot of tank farm testing. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. There was venting from all over the orbital tank farm that reached well beyond the orbital launch mount. And we even saw the tower vent appear as well. Not only that, but it also happened for many hours, as SpaceX was clearly putting the system through its paces. It's obviously pretty important that the orbital tank farm is in good shape and humming along nicely when Booster 10 and Ship 28 return here to the launch site. And this is a good sign. We might see some full stack testing once these vehicles come back, but even if we don't, we have a launch to look forward to, and all of this bodes well for readiness ahead of Flight 3. And speaking of the orbital tank farm, well, we got two new cryogenic tanks arriving at Starbase this week. These big horizontal tanks are part of the new extension for the tank farm that's been installed on the old Starship landing pad. Of all nine tanks we expect to see in this location, these were the seventh and the eighth tank that have arrived at the launch site. We expect them at first to act as extensions of the current tank farm, and eventually they may be the main source for liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen for Starship as SpaceX removes the old vertical cryogenic tanks. After the first launch of Starship, Elon mentioned these would get replaced by what he called hot dog tanks aka horizontal tanks like these ones, and as we've seen in the last few weeks, they're already removing the vertical tanks they weren't using, or that were not as critical to launch operations. We'll definitely keep an eye on when the other vertical tanks get removed, and perhaps more horizontal tanks will be installed in their locations instead. Of course, that'll be a long time from now, which in Starbase terms likely means in the next six months or so. In the meantime, crews are still working on the connections between the new cryogenic tanks and the existing tank farm. You can see the stands that keep all the little pipes in place, and there are even other pipes yet to be connected. Work is also still underway to clean up the area right in front of these new tanks next to the highway, where previously there was a container wall. While we're talking about old tanks going away and new tanks getting brought in, the small black water tank next to the tank farm bunker has been removed and replaced with a nice new metallic one. We're not quite sure why this was done, but it's another thing to add the long list of things that have happened here at the launch site. And there's still more to go over. These next two things that have happened at the orbital launch site could be classified in the category of things I can't believe they haven't done yet, but I'm glad they're finally doing. Basically the same category as the DELU system was in before it was installed. On the one hand, this week we saw crews installing new vertical stringers on two of the vertical tanks on the tank farm. These two tanks are the ones that were behind the two that were removed earlier this month. One of them is being used to store liquid nitrogen, while the other, we think, is still being used to store water. Although it was originally built to store liquid methane. With the other two tanks out of the way, 
These two tanks are exposed to the blast of the exhaust and its pressure during launches. We saw the power of this pressure wave during Flight 2, where, even though no chunks of concrete were thrown around, the pressure of the exhaust hitting the now removed tanks was strong enough to damage them. Hopefully these new reinforcements will help these tanks survive the blast pressure during launch. And yes, as I just mentioned, we do expect these vertical tanks to eventually all go away. But it's better that that happens in a controlled fashion rather than as a result of the force created by 33 Raptor engines. Now, I said before there were two things in this category, and the second one relates to the launch tower's base. The concrete base of the tower is finally receiving steel plates for protection, which should help mitigate the wear and tear on the structure from launches. This also means less refurbishment work and therefore a quicker launch pace. Yet again, something that should probably have been done a long time ago, but I'm glad now that it's getting done. More protection, more better. To wrap up the long list of things going on here at the launch site, I of course have to mention work continues on the orbital launch mount. There, I said the thing, now y'all can be happy. But for real, scaffolding remains on top of the launch mount and work is ongoing on top of it, inside of it, and all around. We really don't know when this work will be finished, but it's not that weird that it's taking so long, considering Starship blasted the mount with the power of all 33 Raptor engines during liftoff on Flight 2. Needless to say, it's quite a lot of force to withstand. And you know what? I can't wait to see the fury of those Raptor engines at work once again. With all of this work being done at the launch site, it really does feel like we're getting closer and closer to Booster 10 and Ship 28 returning to rattle the place with Raptor engines once more. Do you think we'll actually get a launch in February? When do you think Booster 10 and Ship 28 will return? Do you think there'll be any more pre-launch testing, such as a wet dress rehearsal? Let us know in the comments. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get 20% off your annual premium membership and you get a free trial. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget, be excellent to each other. I miss California where rain doesn't fall from the sky. <laughs>